callback to what you were saying earlier. Like, I see a lot of people who thought they could not say things or like things on Google Plus or, or whatever. Yeah, um, we know that. We know that he his curated. apparatus mm -hmm. of, of see something, say something. And, like, and, and this really, I didn't appreciate it. Even in 2015, when I read your um, previous conversation with him about Simon Bisley, where he, where you said that he had a chilling effect, I was like, eh, maybe. But then I, I saw it more and more, especially among younger people than myself the, that I interacted with, that they that they really were chilled. Like just a few months ago, I talked to someone who knew Zach personally. Um, played in, in hangout games with him and, um, like was, uh, previously kind of a defender and ardent supporter of his creative work and stuff and was saying to me that they hate the way that Zach conducts himself online and cannot broach this with him. Can't think of any possible way to broach this with them. Because then any possible thing they want to do in, like, even just blogging about role-playing, they'll be out there the... chilling it out on other people. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, I had seen some of that in our interactions, particularly when, you see, like I said, we started or seemed to start in this kind of friendly way. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, he would say weird shit. Like about the forge that was just counterfactual. It was like, wait, mm -hmm. what? You know, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. And um, and that would crop up. But what really did it for me was with the anecdote that I told you when he challenged me about sorcerer and its in the mm -hmm. moment mechanics. We interacted with it by screen about it by screen, and that's the moment that I told you about when he said something insane. He said, well, you know, you can't tell me about this because I know the game. And I was kind of mm -hmm. like, well, at the moment, you see, in retrospect, I'd love to look back and say, and I said, how can you? Yeah. No, I, I was gobsmacked. I'm just like, you know, I have no mm -hmm. way of coping with this because my mind is still on, hey, he's meeting by my screen. Hey, mm -hmm. he's willing to talk. Hey, mm -hmm. he's, you know, a thoughtful person if he's a little intense, you know. I've still got mm -hmm. all that going on, and he's saying something that's nonsense. Mm -hmm. And it, it just is a... completely, I mean, so at that point, I started to pay more attention. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started picking up that he was actually telling people not to plus other people. Mm -hmm. Or that he would keep a record of who had plussed whom. And I was at that point, I was just like, wait a minute, you know, what, how, who does that? Of course, I'm an idiot. I mean, I don't know that there are people who comb their circles like every day. You know, I don't know that there are people who care greatly about who's friended with whom. I've never checked anybody's friends. Yeah. Well, I saw him do that when he did that, like with the, the, uh, whole thing i don't know the the guy's last name john's it's, it's a greek last name Stravopoulos, I imagine. yeah yeah like um the, the, um john stravopoulos had done sort of an investigation in accusations against jim despero i remember that. and yeah and zach um said came out and said look people have independently looked at this and found it unfounded so if you plus this accusation against him go back and unplus it and i saw that and i thought i see people getting angry about this but he did like he doesn't have power over them like like it doesn't right i just didn't see it as a as the threat that it really became <laughs> well you and i probably just and i feel this i feel for you because i can't imagine anybody obeying yeah yeah right i mean it just seems impossible until i actually saw my pluses boom and then diminish on posts mm -hmm. and then uh, that was in the bisley one again uh in our emails i mentioned to you what i didn't mention in the other video which is that and this is this is what really killed it for me just killed it was uh 
the fact that he edited his first inquiry to me. Yeah. Um, which, again, as I mentioned to you, is just so weak. Who would imagine? Who would imagine that anybody in social media today would instigate a conversation, which in this case was very, very productive and you know, vile mm -hmm. and vicious on his part, the way he jumped in and talked to me. And um, then when you've responded, in my opinion, fairly rationally, but, you know, ready for it. Yeah, yeah. And then even that, when he revises it to us, so, Ron, why do you say that? Yeah, yeah. Then, he re then even that response, which looked like the more rational response, looks crazy. Yeah, you know? I caught him doing that. Um, in the conversation between me and Jim Raji and uh, Ramanan S. Right. Um, and uh, he, uh, I tried to, I assumed good faith. I said, I, I didn't realize when I was responding that you were still revising your previous comment. <laughs> God, you're <laughs> but, apologizing for him doing that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, but I thought, I thought that he was trying to clarify his thoughts but in hindsight, and especially in relation to your comment, it's obvious that he was um, trying to recast. It. But but the problem with that is he. I maybe this is individually specific, but whenever somebody comments on a thread I've commented in on Google Plus, I get an email that says their comment. So if they change oh, right. it. Yeah, if they change it, yeah. there's no fit public record that they've edited it on Google Plus. But, but you I can it. still yeah. see what they originally said. That occasionally yeah. happens to me. That happened. I mean, I don't get email notification. Actually, wait, I take that back. I get email notifications of Google Plus posts, but they're on my Gmail, which I never check. Oh, okay. So to okay. me, there's like nine thousand emails or nine million emails on Google Plus right now. That, <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, but the on, I mean on on Gmail. But the, uh, so therefore I don't have that. And then there's also um, the fact that that doesn't change that a person could alter a post, then notify everybody. Yeah. To say, look what's happening here. Yeah. And as we all know, as every, every propagandist slash politico slash, you know, interested media party knows whoever gets in the first blow you know even if even if somebody says hey that's not true it still looks like they're running around with a broom yeah yeah you know and so it you know it's 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 like if you perceive this whole thing as a boxing match you see what you think are the first punches then somebody comes along and says oh those weren't for no you're already invested you're mm -hmm. already you've already got your narrative going of who said yeah. or whom or whatever. Yeah. And um, and people know this. People have known this for a long time. So anyway, it's it but but again, at that point I was struck again. I was like, how weak is that? If you have to do that in order to, you know, foster your your image or your your narrative, if you have to be so crass as to alter a post or a comment. That's really bush league. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 not even, you know, low grade intellectual. It's like I can't compete intellectually, so I have to pull tricks. I have to go with crowd psychology. I have to go with propaganda because I cannot actually hold my own if the person doesn't back down and submit immediately. And at that point, I started to pay real attention. I was like, since when does he ever actually made a point that wasn't easy? And that's when I, I really started to feel like this is around 2015, 16. I said, I think we're getting scammed. Yeah. I think somebody's. And I thought to myself, well, what, are, what is on the plus side? The plus side is he makes pictures. And I thought a little bit more. And you're talking about somebody who's embedded in comics. Mm -hmm. And I'm well aware that comics fandom has a cognitive problem. They think that if you can make pictures, 
that is in and of itself evidence and support for who knows what bevy of other virtues. Okay. Right. I mean, you that's that's it. I mean, you make pictures, so you've already got sort of your big leg up in any discussion of anything. Um, Ramanan linked to the public thread where it came up where he he called you a harasser, and I was like, I never read that one. I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Everyone, everyone well, seems. I only say that because everybody seems to have. <laughs> so. Well, he he um. Zach was going down a list of harassers who who uh, support each other on Patreon and, and are all um, They're all buddy, connected, buddy man. Each other. All, those, and then he all of them. He mentions you, and I'm like, I have known Ron to be one of the most intellectually honest and transparent people in online discussions. Well, I appreciate that. Hobby. Personally, I think that's more a matter of incompetence at doing anything else, but, you know, well, for what it's worth. Yeah. I... I I always looked at your the rules that you had on the Adup Press forum as sort of a good standard for online discussion is which we treat people with real respect, not fake internet mm -hmm. respect, sir, and we yeah. we treat ideas with ruthless critical like mm -hmm. uh, rigor, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and uh, I think that's a great standard. Um, anyway, he 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 called you out as a harasser. I knew he keeps screenshots of everything that he doesn't like. So I said, what is the, what's the roots of this, Zach? I, and I shouldn't have gotten into it with him because it's, it, it seems so transparently ridiculous to me. But he, he provided the link to the Simon Bisley thread. And even that, I was like, that's not harassment. <laughs> yeah, I think Ramanan like, had the same thing too. Ramanan was scratching his head over that one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and so and so did Jim Raggi, mm -hmm. and that's why he created a private thread to talk to us about it to persuade us that you were really a harasser. And this this thread went on for a couple weeks. Oh my god. Um I'm sorry. Like <laughs> I apologize um, for ever having instigated anything of the kind. <laughs> it was like over 9,000 words and we Finally, like I, it it seemed to be conducted with a veneer of intellectual honesty. He admitted he was wrong about something, which I had never seen. Yeah, before. I've never seen that myself. So amazing, right? But it wasn't. It wasn't something. It wasn't a substantial part of the issue. Um, I admitted I was wrong about something else, um, but that also wasn't a substantial part of the issue under discussion and. Then um, we left it. It was like two days before Gen Con. And I thought, Ron goes to Gen Con. I know Zach and Jim are going to Gen Con. They might bump into each other. This was 2015. Yeah. And they might settle this. So I'm just going to stop pouring my own energy into yeah. this right now. And then I heard a year later that Jim Raggi posted something about a great conversation he witnessed between you and Zach. Well, and this was 2017. And, okay. um, so two years later. Yeah. My, my frustration with that is that I really can see how somebody invested in the good faith position can look at any of these conversations and say, well, at least there was a meeting of minds. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and completely gloss over moments of abuse or moments of dishonesty that had actually occurred. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 